Section 7.5, proportions in triangles, we're going to use the side splitter theorem and the triangle angle bisector theorems. When two or more parallel lines intersect other lines, proportional segments are formed. So up until now, we have not used proportional segments in this way. Um, what we did was we did um, each separate triangle. So there might have been a small triangle and a large triangle. And we did have the same markings, though. So when you look at RS and XY, we did already know that those were parallel. There was one like that on the test, but it wasn't that we did it too soon. We did this one in a different way on the test. And you can't do the correction using this. Okay, You have to use what we did before. Um, so on this one, instead of using two separate triangles now, notice how they have XR to RQ. They're doing each part of that side compared to each other. And then they're going to do the same thing here, YS to SQ. It doesn't matter if you have them flipped upside down. However, you cannot go XR to SY. Um, you're not going to go across like that. So this little section compared to that little section and that little section compared to that one. So you're looking at sides only. So in our first example, what is the value of x in the picture below? Um, we're sticking to sides. I'm going to go with x plus 1. Is it over x or over 12? 12. 12. Stick to the same side equals, so I kind of look at it like this, and you could go 12 over this one. If you just kind of imagine a little equals in the middle, they are in exactly the same order as you see them. That's kind of how I usually do it. Um, and then x over 9. So the, the two things on the top are comparative. They're not the same angle or anything. Um, the two things on the bottom are also uh, comparative. We're going to distribute this time um, 12x equals 9 times x plus 1. Now, some of you, when we did the um, cross multiplication on the second page of that test, here's what you didn't do. So if you got some of those wrong, uh, pay attention and you'll get these right when you correct it. Um, on the right side, we do have to distribute the 9. Many of you did 9x plus 1. It's supposed to be 9x plus 9. The 9 does distribute to that 1, and that's probably the part you didn't do. Then we can put the x's on the same side. So I'll subtract 9x and then divide by 3. So I get x equals 3. Um, it doesn't say to plug them back in. If it said what's the length of kp, then you'd have to plug it back in. Otherwise, they're just looking for um, that value and then they're done. Okay, so um, I'm going to set up the other one in a slightly different way just to show you that there are multiple ways to do them. Oops. What is the value of a in the picture? So I'm going to leave the order the same as it is. Imagine an equals in the middle. So I'm going to leave it with a over a plus 4. This is how I usually do it. And 12 over 18. So I started at the top this time instead of the bottom. I did a and I compared it to a plus 4. And I also did 12 and I compared it to 18. And now we're, we're going to cross multiply just like we did on the other one. 18a equals 12 times the quantity a plus 4. And we'll distribute that 12 on the right to both of those things. So instead of 12a plus 4, it's 12a plus 48. And then we'll get the a's on the same side by subtracting 12a and dividing by 6. So this is half of it, and I will be looking at that. The other half is the answer. Um, since there's distributive property in here, you do kind of have to show a little bit of work. Um, some show more than others, and that's totally fine. Um, then we go to the corollary to the side splitter theorem. Um, this basically says when you have multiple sets of parallel lines, they could have more than this if they wanted. You're still going to just set it up kind of like the triangle ones that we looked at. It just doesn't really form a triangle here. AB over BC, so we're sticking to that same side. Imagine an equals in the middle, and then the two on the right also um, kind of form another uh, fraction. So here's an um, example that relates to that one. Three campsites are shown below. What's the length of site A along the river? So here we have um, four sets of parallel lines, but it doesn't matter how many that you have. Think of it if you kind of 
flip it upside down. I don't want to do it because you guys won't be able to see it. But um, these I'm going to put on the left side. These I'm going to put on the right side. You could do it the opposite as well. Um, we are looking at the length of site A along the river. So we want this one. I'm going to call that one X. So I'm going to say uh, 9 over 7.2 equals X over 8. Okay, so I stuck these two. 9 over 7.2, they were on the same side, x over 8. This one you can go directly to the answer because it is a very basic uh, cross multiplication question. So 9 times 8 is 72, 72 divided by 7.2 is 10. Label it whatever the label is, 10 yards. So these are the two things that I'd be looking for there. They're not all super hard, it's just that you have to get used to how you set them up. Uh, triangle angle bisector theorem. If a ray bisects an angle of a triangle, then it divides the opposite side into two segments that are proportional to the other two sides of the triangle. Um, when you look at how this one is set up, CD over DB, so notice again these are on the same segment. Um, also they're opposite those congruent angles, so that kind of makes sense. And then you can compare it to any of the other parts. They did um, this one, since they chose from this triangle first, they went this one over that one. So one from the left triangle over one from the right triangle and they're in that same spot. So here's the proportion for an example like that one. Um, I always take the ones opposite those congruent angles first. So I'm looking at those two. I'm going to go with the left triangle first, 10 over 18. And then I'm going to jump back to the left triangle and I'm going to put 12 on the top and x on the bottom. So these are from the left triangle, these are from the right triangle. Okay, and that's kind of how I set them up every time. Um, again, it's a very basic cross multiplication question, so you don't have to show any work. You do have to show your setup though. Uh, 18 times 12 divided by 10. Sometimes they are decimals like this one. Okay, so you do get 21.6. Uh, what is the value of y in the picture below? So if I start out with 9.6, what should I compare that to? Y, 24, or 16? 9.6 to 16, it's on that same stretch of length, and they're also both opposite the angles, so those are the two you compare first. Since I chose from the left triangle first, that goes on the top, and then the 24 will go on the bottom. So again, these are from the left triangle, these are from the right. Uh, 24 times 9.6 divided by 16 is 14.4. Again, it's a decimal, but it's not a super big deal. Okay, so don't be alarmed. You could put these in fractions if you wanted to. Um, for these, I always just go with decimals, um, mainly because that's what my calculator gives me. Yours usually gives you fractional answers, which is totally fine. It doesn't really matter. So 24 times 9.6 divided by 16. Okay, and that's it. So setup is important today. If you just give me answers, you will not get full credit, especially on that quiz tomorrow. Um, we will be taking a quiz on 7.4 and 7.5, so if you didn't watch the video, make sure you do that. Um, and if there were any theorems, make sure you get those into your notes as well. Um, the same thing that we normally do um, is what you copy, basically the title and the, um, the part on the left.